Hey, everybody, welcome to the Hire My VA Team in Business Building podcast brought to you by yougozi.com and Victory. And in this podcast and at Hire My VA, we help you to reclaim your freedom through hiring and thriving with virtual assistants without breaking the bank. And of course, that means your bank. I'm Dave Broad, and I'm here with Larry Broughton, my business partner with Yugozi, Hire My VA, and some other things we got coming up. Um, but Larry, the most important thing is you are a great friend, supportive of Thank me you. like crazy. Love you, brother. What's up? Love you too, handsome David. How are you? What's I up am... with me? Yep. Same what's old up? Stuff, man. Same old stuff. It's been a rough couple of weeks, if I'm being honest with you. I think you have had a couple of rough ones too, right? Oh, yeah. It was <laughs> like a couple of days were really tough. Really yeah. tough. Yeah. Yeah. But all in all, I'm feeling optimistic, feeling positive about things. Um, and uh, I'm really excited about a couple of um, opportunities that are presenting themselves to us yep. uh, for that are going to benefit us. But I think even more importantly, going to benefit the folks who are listening and watching to this right now. There's more ways to engage. Uh, I think it's a good way to put it. That's actually a pretty good saying. More ways to engage. Woohoo! Well, tell us, Larry, what is it? <laughs> oh, the two things we were just talking about? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think one of them, some people have heard us flirting with this for a while, and it's kind of getting formalized at this point. Um, uh, I share with folks oftentimes that I'm, I'm blown away at how few people actually read books, right? And how do we learn this? Well, from our coaching clients, from our mastermind members, right? And then oftentimes we'll give them a book and many people will joke around. I haven't read a book since high school. And oftentimes I thought that they were joking around about yeah. it, right? <laughs> until I stumbled on this uh, statistic, Dave, that said that uh, th these are rough numbers, but roughly 33% of high school graduates never read a book after graduation. And something like 42% of college and university yeah. graduates never read another book. And it just so flies in the face to our one of our mantras about leaders are readers, right? Yes. Leaders are learners right? Learners are earners. There's definitely a process here. And, and Brian Tracy talks about this. He's got a great quote that I have shared about what happens uh, when you start reading books. So with that said, and knowing from our clients that we are all super busy, and many of us, frankly, since we don't read, we're not good readers. But guess what? There's no better time than now to be alive, Dave, because you don't have to actually sit down <laughs> in turn pages anymore. You can actually listen to audiobooks. If you do the habit stacking that we oftentimes talk about while you're walking, while you're getting ready for dinner, whatever it is you're doing while you're shaving in the morning, you could be listening to an audiobook, right? Yeah. All right? So let's say that you don't even want to do that. Well, you and I have started this book club that I really encourage every listener, every viewer to go look at it's called leaders or readers book club over on the alignable platform mm. okay and it's free it is free and here's the great thing about this book club you don't even have to read the book because we do it for you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in about 90 minutes each month we take one of these books that have been life-changing for us like uh brain rules is the one that we did last month we're doing uh alex uh, hermosi's book, um, $100 million offer that's coming up. We're going to be doing Victor Frankl's um, Man's Search for Meeting. We got some amazing books, the 12-week year. And so you and I, or the Dave and I, are going to be taking the 20% most powerful concepts from each of these books that will net you the 80% results that the book is trying to get for you. You get an action guide. Um, uh, that you can just follow along, take notes on, and then there's a Q and A opportunity at the end of each of of the um, of the sessions, and it's free. Did I say it's free, Dave? It's free. Okay, <laughs> it's get free. on there. So why are we doing this? Because damn it, entrepreneurs, leaders, and high achievers are the world changers, and you and I are committed to doing this, to helping these people change. And it's a it's a small way that we can kind of get people in, uh, interested in reading again. Because I could tell you for years I didn't read read books. Many people know that I'm dyslexic. And so it was difficult for me to read. And I realized it's I've got to train my brain. So um had to retrain my brain, create new neural pathways in order to learn to read better. So yeah. you and I are both avid readers now. So there's that. Also on the alignable platform is a second exciting thing. By the time this podcast drops, or it will be imminent after that, 
we are doing a paid group on Alignable where people will have direct access to you and me, where we'll be doing monthly Q and A's. We will be doing um, panel discussions from time to time. We're going to be sharing tips and tricks and tools with video tutorials uh, on them. We'll be doing uh, virtual spotlight sessions. Uh, we'll be doing coaching sessions for 29 bucks a month. That's, that's what it is right now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. Yes. That's what it is right now. It's $29 a month. Yeah. You know? And you will have more access to Dave and I than you've ever had, except for those folks who are paying, you know, the big bucks when we were doing the live in-person mastermind session for people who were flying to our office four times a year, spending three days with us and then doing our big live events. This is all pre-pandemic. But yeah. right now this you'll have between the book club and um, this coaching program, um, there's going to be uh, a lot of access, live access yeah. uh, to us, not just to our tools and trips or tips and all that kind of stuff. So why why can we do that? Why can we even offer it? Well, because Alignable is freaking awesome. They are basically, I'll just be honest with you, they'll, they'll be doing the marketing for us, right? They've got seven and a half million people on there. That's right. And they're going to be coming, to, they're going to be helping bring people uh, to us. Okay. And so we don't have to spend those marketing dollars that we would normally have to spend. You, if you're on here, you uh, probably run a business and you, you all know that one of the most costly components or mo most costly elements of running your business is client acquisition. Alignable is handling that for us. Yeah. Right. Um, and it's just numbers. We can get more people there. Okay. And so that's what we're doing. I'm very, very excited about it. Um, so far. Um, it's very interesting. We have 90 people in our book club already, and we've had it up for only a couple of weeks at this point. Um, we should give a prize for number 100 and number 125 and that kind of thing. But <laughs> join us there. Come join us over there. But anyway, that's yeah. a big, that's a big, long setup. Um, but um, I, I feel very positive about what, what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. We, and we want you guys to get on the Alignable platform because it's got some great benefits. It's really will help yes. you to network with other small businesses. It's really powerful. If it's not are, a social if, media platform. No, it's a it's networking not. platform. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. And, but if you guys can't do that, or if you refuse to, we still want you to take advantage of what we're doing, at least right now. So go to yougozi.com slash book club and register there. Yeah. But I think at so some point, we're going to be moving free, it though. soon. Yes, that's yeah, right. Alignable is free. It's free. Now they do have some bumped up premium levels, but that just gives you more exposure um across the, the country you know yeah i mean you get some other benefits too but you can get full access to it you get full access to us just by going and being a free member on there right yeah okay that sounds so, awesome that this this was not meant to be a uh a, a plug or uh an advertisement yes, for alignable but i guess it's <laughs> turned into me <being laughs> Hey, you know, this is our podcast. We need to talk about what we're doing, our initiatives and, yeah. and what's going on because sure. I mean, there's great business lessons. In fact, I mean, one of the yes. best business lessons that, you know, we're, we're implementing right now is focus on your strengths. Yes. Right? And we're focusing on our strengths about coaching sure. people and helping people sure. and bringing tools and allowing yeah. you guys to grow your businesses as opposed to spending all that time on marketing on ourselves yeah they've for folks who have followed us for a while they know that what you and i definitely bring is um you know we're like firm and loving parents <laughs> sometimes yeah, yeah. we're not going to just uh keep you around or fill you full of fluff we're going to you know we're aggregators of great ideas and then we yeah. share those ideas but then we try to hold people accountable for yeah. their own success to, to our own detriment sometimes frankly that's right. you know that's right um and what do I mean by that? Well, sometimes I feel like we care more about people's businesses than they care about their own. <laughs> well, well, that and that directly led me to having a couple of bad days last week, which is related to totally related to what we're going to talk about. And All right, what are we going to talk about? Um, well, I and by the way, I hope you guys don't hear that. Um, we're getting a little bit of construction done in our at our house, and so there's a little mm. bit of jackhammering. Hopefully, you guys don't hear it, but you know that's. That's the life that we live right now, right? right. <laughs> There's no hiding. The dogs barking, the kids crying. Yes, I love it. Yeah, so we got that. This Our grandson's reality. with us for the day. Yeah. Oh, there could be all kinds of surprises coming in this one. Oh, good. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> huh. 
All right. Well, um, let's talk about what our uh, question is. Our and questions. our question is, how do I stay positive in a negative world? <laughs> It's like the moon and stars are aligned with what we were just we've just been saying. That's yeah, good. We've been living this, right? We have been living this. We've oh man, this. how do I stay positive in a negative world? And you know, well, I, it, the world is. It doesn't matter what side you are on politically. It doesn't matter what's happening economically. There's always stuff that's going to be negative, and part of that sure. is because that's what catches the eyeballs you know, for people. And we talk about that. We rarely talk about the positive and that's what we want to change in this episode. Yeah. It's very interesting. When you, when you said that, Dave, a couple of things came to mind. And one was one of the mantras I heard um, uh, years ago from one of my former spiritual mentors is what I call him. And um, he talked about, you know, Larry, two things um, steal your joy, comparing yourself to others and living in the past. Right. And that's kind of the same thing with being yeah. positive, right? That those things, they're positivity suckers. <laughs> and for those who know me now, I think most people would describe me as positive, upbeat, optimistic, you know, that kind of thing. But that's not yeah. always, not always been um, the way people would just describe describe me. <laughs> it's funny because I've mentioned something about this online recently, Dave about this and one of my former special forces teammates said that's interesting because i always remember you being the the can do guy the one who is positive <laughs> um and but i'm just saying it's seasons you know seasons in my life if something was weighing heavy on me oh people knew it you know what i mean it's like i if i'm being punished you're going to be punished by the universe <laughs> you know what i mean share the pain um, right yes exactly but we can't <clears throat> let our pursuit of perfection ruin things mm -hmm. i used the word in there deliberately for a second a mistake that um most of us make when shifting our attitudes um from pessimism to optimism is that we think that we have to be perfect and that we do things perfectly mm -hmm. all the time but this traps us from being positive changing to a positive attitude um uh, in our journey while we may slip and fall and um you know lose our way sometimes um we need to lighten up with ourselves if we set these superhuman standards that i've decided dave i'm going to be positive and then tomorrow i have a negative day or the next day it's really a super self-defeating it is a tough journey moving from a sense of pessimism to optimism um and if we don't cut ourselves some slack on this what ends up happening is we feel like a failure. I can't even do it for one day, you right. know, and then we get angry and we ultimately just give up and the habit never changes. Because I think it's like anything is like going to the gym or eating healthy or whatever it is, just making the decision, they're going to be more positive and more optimistic um, will be a struggle. So I want to lay that platform before we go much further. And I can speak from personal experience on this. So. Well, I, you know, and I, we're going to, we're just going to kind of riff on some of these, um, okay. you know, you and I throughout the, the coaching programs that we've had, I think we've, we've touched on a lot of these, so they're pretty easy to keep coming to mind. Um, I think I've got a couple of notes here to make sure that I get some of these things in, good, good. but you know, one of the things that I was thinking about kind of before we got on and when we got this question is, I mean, there's a lot that we're going to go through and we may make this into a multi-part episode just because of the length. We may or may not. Um, we're going to see how it goes. Okay. Uh, but one of the things I was thinking of is how do we make this more useful for, you know, folks um, that, that are going to listen to this. And I think there's um, you know, two things to consider. One is, mm -hmm. I and mean, there's a lot of stuff we'll talk about, but any one of the things that we don't do or don't consider can kind of drag us down. You know, um, there sure. can be, it can be a trigger for us to go back into being negative. That's one thing. But the other thing is we got to make sure that we're self-aware of all of these different items. So I think when we're, when we're done with this, I think we're going to put together some kind of a, uh, you know, like, like a checklist or a, a tool that you guys can use um, that will accompany this when you actually listen to it 
that you'll get some benefit out of to kind of like rate yourself and become self-aware yeah. of where love you are idea. at on any of these, um, these items. I love that idea. So I think that my sense cool. is this is, yeah. Yeah. Dave, one of the mantras that I share all the time is that, um, a good attitude won't guarantee victory, but a bad one will guarantee defeat. That's right. <laughs> right. And so <laughs> don't be the old Larry, where if you have a bad day, you punish everyone around you for that, because certainly, um, no one wants to have you on their team is what I found, including significant yeah. others. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, people want to, people want right. to work with people who are positive, you know, yeah. and it doesn't, we're not talking about being Pollyannish, you know, when the no, trains no, 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 no. 10 feet from running you over, you're thinking, wow, I just really believe it's not going to hit me. That's not what we're talking sure about. Sure, it's a pretty paint job on that. Train. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we got to balance out positivity with realism, yeah, but it's, sure. it's taking that realism and seeing what the opportunities are, what the positive things are in, uh, within that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, let's start um, going through some of these thoughts. Um, you were talking a couple of them. Maybe the first one that, that that came to my mind as you were talking about is seeking perfection as opposed to excellence, meaning you're not supposed to do that. So how to stay positive? I guess I said that wrong. So we need to seek excellence and not perfection. Yeah. The funny thing is perfection is a killer. No one is ever going to do anything perfectly except for what would, who, who is the gymnast when we were younger, Dave, in the 76 Olympics. Uh, oh, there she was. Got a perfect 10 in, her, in the core. And it was her. Anyway, Mary you Lou know Ray what I mean? And... To be a human, to live day to day, yeah. you may have a moment of perfection at something that you do, but it's that snapshot in time. Yeah. But to live a life of perfection, having perfect relationships, make always making perfect decisions, it's just not real. It's not realistic. Yeah. You know? And so, but I think what we ought to be seeking, though, is, as you say, Dave, pursue excellence and a level of eliteness, okay? Because even good and mediocre yeah. are, is a death of a life in a business, frankly, you know? Right. But if you can pursue excellence and really strive for elite performance, wow, like your yeah. life changes. And you, there's a sense of accomplishment that comes with it. You know, uh, but all of this, Dave, leads me to what I think is probably a, a writer downer on, on this is that we have to be intentional and make a commitment of becoming more positive. That's, I think, where the whole thing starts. Yeah. You know, maybe you've had people tell you, boy, you are, a, you know, negative Nelly, or can you be a little more pessimistic, Dave? You know, <laughs> Yeah. Be honest. Ask yourself, have people made these comments to you before? Because sometimes we're not even sometimes it's a slow burn. You you know, sometimes it's situational and you know immediately oh, I'm in a bad mood. Or, oh, but sometimes it creeps up on us and we yeah. don't even recognize it. Yeah. So once you realize it, though, you've got to make the commitment to be intentionally positive. Yeah. If, if you want to change, you've got to make a commitment. It's got yeah. to be. Yeah, for sure. Let me go back to that other point, though, that you made, because something hit me about seeking um, excellence and not perfection is uh -huh. that, well, well, how do we seek excellence? And one way that I I do my best to try to do this, I'm, I'm not perfect at it, of course, because I'm seeking excellence, not perfection, <laughs> um, is if I'm doing a task, if I'm doing like a design or video or writing something uh -huh. down or sending an important email, what I will do is before actually sending it or before finishing something up, I'll take a step back and saying, is there anything else that I can do relatively quickly that will make this better? That's so good. You know, I had and, a conversation with a team member about this the other day because this team member has a tendency of just wanting to get things done. Oh and hitting gosh. send mm -hmm. so they can cross it off their list. But then oftentimes we have to go back and revisit it <laughs> That's right. because it can be better. I like that idea, Dave, of intentionally stepping back from it for a minute, mm -hmm. pausing. Yeah, and just a minute. And mm -hmm. tweak it, that final couple of percentage points. Yeah. That's good. I like that a lot. Yeah, and you can always get... um 
especially like having somebody like you working with you, Larry, it's so important because you're a maximizer. It's one of yeah. your strengths. Yeah. And you take something that's like 90, 95% there and put it over the top. So having somebody in your life like that is really, really helpful when it comes to making things excellent. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. And, and try to build some systems in for some of this. Like one of the things from my emails, um, what I do is I have a program, it's called Mail Butler, and it delays the sending of an email for 30 seconds after I hit send. During those 30 seconds, I, I will ask myself the question, is it really okay for me to let that thing go? Mm. And then I swear, Larry, half of the time, I'm like, I need to add something else or I need to rephrase something. And then I hit the little button that says unsend. And then I go edit it. Because many of us have sent emails in haste. Yeah. Out of anger sometimes. And it's hard to pull that. Pull it back. Pull that back. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a good recommendation. So that's a, that's a built-in way. Um, good. That's a built-in way. Um, good. Good. Well, and speaking of kind of writing, I think there's another good thing that you can do to stay positive is, um, you know, begin journaling about oh, so good. it and, and you can use this for anything whatever you're trying to improve on, but especially being positive, be in journaling about it. Um, you know, you can start every day saying, well, how was I positive? And then start using that time to focus on what you're grateful for. Yeah. That, that kind of makes this sense. Is, this is how I started my whole journaling process is that again, I go back to that same spiritual mentor who said that I need to start journaling and to start. And I was like, what the heck are you talking about? He said, just start making a list of things that you're grateful for. Start there. Yeah. Right. But the key is when you're journaling, um, you can do it however you want, but I would just recommend you, you need to ask the right questions. Right. Um, Cause we're talking about moving from being a pessimist to a, to an optimist. Right. So if I were asking questions in my pessimism, pessimistic days and things were rough, the questions I would ask is, why does this always happen to me? <laughs> <laughs> Why do bad things happen to me all the time? Yeah. How come they always get the break? You know, yeah. that kind of that kind of thing. Yeah. Those aren't the right questions to be asking when you're journaling. The right questions to be asking when you're journaling and you're trying to move from pessimism to optimism to po towards positivity. Maybe that's a good way to put it. Pessimism to positivity is what's one good thing that I can take from this situation? Oh, that's good. What can I learn from this? You know, um, what's one small step that I can take today to solve the problem that got me here? The questions like that, instead of being a victim, taking charge. Yeah, you know, that's good. A, a little bit. So yeah. you got to ask yourself the right questions. Don't ask why it's just always happened to me. You know, <laughs> woe is me, you know, but. These, well, because, so these are action things. What can I do? Right. So go ahead, Dave. Yeah. I'm sorry. I interrupted. No, I think it's important. You. If you don't ask the right questions and you're not going to get the right answers, you're sure. going to get the wrong type of answers. Because like if you you said, why does this always happen to me? Then you pretty soon you go down the path of, well, because the world conspires against me. Everybody hates me. I'm no yeah. good at this. I mean, you're asking the wrong question. You're going to make it worse. Yeah. An early mentor of mine, Bob Beal, um, would say that if you want profound answers, you have to ask profound questions. Yeah. And he had a whole book of questions um, <laughs> that you can ask, right? And you've seen me do that from time to time. Mm -hmm. like on Friday, we had that call. It could have been a very difficult call, but mm -hmm. when you ask questions, you get people to realize, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there's a problem here, right? Yes. So why do we do that? Because it's better to have a positive outcome from her. Listen, it's so easy to run a beating people up you and i had to review a legal document you know yeah. last week yeah and it was difficult not to go negative like what the heck are they thinking you know <laughs> they want us to do this are you kidding that's crazy <laughs> but we had to pause and say okay maybe this isn't even maybe this is comes from legal maybe this is boilerplate let's ask some questions to find out was this the intent and as it turns out it wasn't even the intent that's right so we avoided a negative situation and expected and searched for the positive. Yes. Yeah. We, situation. yeah, it was, it, we didn't make the assumptions. Yes. That was good. Go. That's good. Well, okay. So that's, that's a good one about journaling. What do you think? Um, 
what do you think of it might be another one larry well i think we need to consider what are the habits that are formed um that we have in our life you know mm -hmm. the importance and um we have to establish positive habits right right um in our life this is why one of the things we talk about is a morning routine right that's one of the positive habits that i've started uh I think nine years ago now um is doing a morning routine that includes positive messaging coming into my brain po setting positive intentions for the day listening to positive music uh in the morning to set myself up for a positive optimistic day that's a habit that we have yes. to form you know in our uh in our hotel company uh during our morning stand-up calls with executives we do a gratitude everybody goes around and says what they're grateful for that's a habit that we have all formed right yeah and and larry i'm looking at my looking at our youtube channel mm -hmm. our MBA youtube channel because we've got you know a whole bunch of episodes on there and we did record um some episodes about how to establish habits and we talk those are 115 116 and 117 okay i mean we spent a lot of time on those oh i do remember right? that now yes why are habits yeah, important yeah. how to create lasting habits actually i'm going to share my screen right now yeah good. for those of you who are are watching you should check out our youtube channel all the videos you can see a whole bunch of different things here that we're talking about from a business perspective mm -hmm. from team building perspective but there's a, a few here that uh, number 115 why are habits important how to create lasting habits five good habits to enter 2022 which there you go. likely will be the same as 2023 but maybe shift a little <laughs> bit <laughs> we'll see well it's funny um that does kind of bring up another one that kind of is top of mind for me you said creating new habits and oftentimes what we are recording this in october okay people are already starting to think about new year's resolutions and what's the number one resolution <laughs> every year for people go this to the is, gym go to the gym exercise yeah right and truly though plenty of studies have have shown the importance of exercise in our lives right not just in your physical health but in your mental health mm. you know the national institute of health um they have done plenty of studies on this and shows that uh, exercise releases endorphins into the bloodstream that's right you know and it's those endorphins that make us feel good mm -hmm. emotionally feel good not just physically but mentally emotionally right um you know but the other thing, part of exercise, like I don't get to the gym like I should or like I used to, right? But what I do is I do get outside. I do get fresh air. There's been plenty of studies that have that have shown this, right? So I go for walks with with Bodie, my dog, okay. right? And so that fresh air mm -hmm. is really important to us for our mental well being uh, yes. as well. But it could just be sitting around on a park bench, to be honest with you, outside or sitting on the patio, you know, in a chair because. The vitamin D that you get from the sun. That's important. It does. You know, and that's good, not just for your body, but for your soul, for your mood. Right? Yeah, that's right. Um, because I can tell you, I found that during, you know, the, the big shutdown during the pandemic, I still have not lost the weight I, I gained from my gut at that time because I was glued to my chair. I was in survival mode, you know, right. and not getting out. I remember telling you there, there were days, like I used to walk, you know, a minimum of, you know, let's say 7,500 steps a day in the old days. Right. And I was always shooting for at least 10,000 a day, but I remember there were days where I wouldn't do over 500 steps an entire day. Oh. And that would go on for weeks, you know, because it was to the shower, to my office downstairs to get, you know, something to, to eat back up work. I wasn't taking Bodhi out, nothing, right? Poor so exercise, Bodhi. so both my physical health and especially my mental health was, was diminished. So get some movement, get those endorphins kicking in, get the yeah. vitamin D, get the fresh air, and you don't need to go become a bodybuilder or a power lifter. Just get outside and get some movement. Yeah. And this is, 
we talked about this in uh, one of our previous book clubs where we talked about the book brain rules. There you go. Yeah. That was one of the top rules on how to keep your brain going was exercise. And he talked about that a lot. And that's one of the reasons why we got guys, we want you to join our book club is because, you know, Larry, like you said, what is the value of one good idea? What is the, the value of value? With the lifetime, the lifetime value, value of one, value. lifetime value. If you can make that shift to doing, like you said, just a little bit of movement, just walking outside, it can uh, add years to your life. It's yeah, incredible. For sure. For sure. It's incredible. Well, I think related to that though, is, is diet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, garbage in garbage out. Some folks say that our bodies are really miraculous at sucking up the nutrients of whatever we're eating, <laughs> but the better you know, and, and we're not going to talk about what you should do and how you should eat. Uh, but the, you know, the better your diet is, it will help you with energy and having good energy helps you stay positive Sure, sure. as well. Yeah. So that's it. That's, that's important as well. Yeah. Here's another one that kind of, it, it ties into it. And some of these are so simple, but they're not easy. So this is why we don't often do them. We know that we should be getting exercise. We know that we should be eating correctly. Mm -hmm. We know we should be getting rest and sleep. We know that right? But our sleep hygiene is one of the worst things that impacts negatively impacts our mental state and leads to depression. In fact, I just heard today, um, so listening to a podcast that um, now the National Institute of Health um, has said that depression mm -hmm. is the third or fourth leading indicator of heart, uh, heart attacks. They just Ooh. added that in there. So mental, wow. mental state, right? Because you just, whoa, is me. Yeah. So there are things that you can do in the brain now. And I'm just, I'm not through the podcast yet where they can do things in a certain part of the hemisphere of the brain, left side of the hemisphere of the brain that can slow your heartbeat down by 10, 10 beats per minute. I'm just getting into it. I'm not going to share all that yet because, <laughs> but the point is sleep is critical to all of all of this to, to mood, right? You know, studies have shown that when you're sleep deprived, you become angry and you're more negative mm -hmm. than when you are getting sleep. Yep. Right. And so that's really uh, important. And, and when you're angry and when you're negative, you have trouble falling asleep and staying asleep through, through the night. Um, and so, well, how do you counter that, Larry? Well, you have to develop sleep patterns. You have to prepare for bed. You know, I share this idea all the, this all the time, and so it's kind of humorous to me, is that I used to love action movies, you know, and um, one of the things I would do is watch movies like Full Metal Jacket in bed at night, yeah, and then wonder, why can't I sleep through the night? Yeah. <laughs> well, for one thing, there's the screen time that you shouldn't be doing for at least an hour before bedtime, right? Yep. So instead of talking about the negatives, maybe what I would do is, here's what you really should, you should have a sleep ritual, you know, an hour before bedtime, no screen time, lights get dimmed around the house, right? Quiet or soothing music is on slowly get ready for bed, brushing your teeth, washing your face, maybe laying your clothes out for the next day, doing your gratitude journal that we were talking about. This journaling that you do at night is all the positive stuff. If there's other stuff that you want to talk about, sexual trauma that you've had in your life or you know mm. unforgiveness that shouldn't be written before you go to bed yeah at night okay this That's is the positive sad. stuff um so that you can prepare your brain for recovery during the night yeah plenty of studies have shown that you wake up the way you go to bed so if mm. you go to bed angry you're probably going to wake yeah. up angry and anxious yeah. Yeah. okay so sleep is so important. I think we've talked about this before, though, on other podcasts. Yeah, because I have on my other screen here, I've got, oh, yeah, let me share my screen really quick so people can see it, but I'll describe it. Um, here is our podcast 112. How do I rest and recover as an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. Right. So that was, mm -hmm. that was good. So we went into a lot of detail on that one. Yeah, yeah. So go to that if you want to get some more uh, tips and tricks on that. Yeah. Um, well, you know, you you talked, Larry, about, um, and it reminds me, you talked about making sure at nighttime that you 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 journal about the positive, you think about gratitude. Well, that's so important that we feed ourselves 
really good stuff mentally. Yeah. Right. And, you know, it's, it's replacing negative thoughts with positive thoughts, but when you are feeding yourself good things mentally, there's really, let's see, I think there's about three things I can think of, right? Good yeah. audio, listen to good audio, um, read good books. We talk about our book club. So I say, when you say good audio, you mean like music, positive podcast, those types of things. Yeah. Positive and, uh, and helpful. And, um, like if you want to listen to music, music that will help you be positive, maybe, um, like for us, we're Christians. I love to listen to Christian music and it's, it's very positive music. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, don't listen to, if you're going to listen to music, don't listen to music that says, um, I'm going to beat you down. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. You're not going to do that. Dave, that's going to be an outtake right there. And somebody <laughs> is going to cut that up, put music to it. <laughs> Keep going. I'm sorry. Yeah. So yeah. So good audio like that. Yeah. Good books. And I think, um, I know Larry, you've gone on a news fast for a while and it makes a difference and yeah, you may sure. not have to do that or you may have to, but you want to at least limit the news that you listen to or that you read. I totally agree. I keep Limited. going back. Yeah. I keep going back to a spiritual mentor, but he really did help me uh, during this time. But that was one of the requirements. I had to I had to go on a news fast. I had to go on I forget it was a might have been a 30 day news fast to begin with because I was a news junkie back yeah. then and everything was negative. That's right. right? Yep. And and so because I kept getting all this negative stuff into my brain and I was already in a negative space, I was thinking Daryl, look at all this negativity out there. Look at the news. And he said, stop, stop. Yeah. The reason it's news, Larry, is because it's rare. Yeah. Uh huh. This isn't impacting most of the world. You know, this isn't impacting most people's lives. You know, the stuff that happens all the time is no longer news. That was like, <clears throat> right, you know? Yeah. So, um, and I'm not saying be an ostrich and put your head in the sand. And right. I hear what's going on. Yeah, it's not what, we're what he got me to realize is now that my problem was I'm a political science junkie and I wanted to, I always wanted to be the first person, you know, who knew things. And I wanted to be that person that my friends would come to and say, hey, Larry, this thing that's going on in the Middle East, what do you think about it? And that was me. It was an ego thing for yeah. me more than anything else. I had to let that go. Right. And what he made me realize is that if there's something truly bad that's going to impact my life, other people will tell me about it. <laughs> that's uh, you know, whether it's the fires in the, in my neighborhood or an earthquake that's ha happened or something like that, you know? Yeah. So that was, um, that was an important one, but it does remind me, Dave, about, we have to be intentional about re replacing these negative thoughts with positive ones. And we shot a video several years ago, maybe eight years ago right. um, called brain flushing. Um, and maybe we can put a link, a link of that little uh, allegory or analogy um, of brain flushing, where you, you just got to imagine you've got a pitcher of swamp water in front of you, and you're not allowed to pick up the pitcher and pour it out, but you have to replace that swamp water with clear, crystal clear water. Well, how do you do it? You have to pour clean water on top of it until it ultimately dilutes it and then displaces it the brain and negative uh, thoughts is kind of like that. Not exactly, but it's kind of like that. So there, I found that. Good. So it's on you goes .com, the importance of brain flushing. It's All also on I YouTube, did, but still, but yes. Yeah. And, but it, here it has the article and it's kind of good, kind of good. It's excellent, actually. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> can actually just positive go. feedback. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. You can just search Yugozi brain flushing and it pops up. It's amazing what happens. So the World Wide Web. Yeah, I, I hope I, I heard about it just the other day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the, the video is here and it's a great video. Um, I think you um, look a little bit younger in that than than now. And I've aged a lot. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So that's a that actually is a great video to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, you know, I think related to that as well, feeding yourself good things mentally, what you are listening to is you got to be careful about the people in your lives because they are going to be talking to you. 
So, I mean, there's really, um, let's see, a few things that we could do here. I think one is with your friends, you know, make sure you get positive friends, be around positive people. Um, and then of course you want to be positive to them, you know, like attracts like almost all the time. So if you're going to get positive friends, you want them to be around you, you're going to have to be positive. (laughs) Dave, this is such a difficult thing to do for many people. Um, you know, in one of the talks I give called F words, it's one of the speeches I do. I talk about this, that these types of people that you're talking about right, right now, I call them energy vampires. Yeah. They're negative all the time and they suck your lifeblood and we have to exorcise them from our lives as if it's a demon we have to get them out and away from us if we truly want to be positive the challenge is that sometimes we're married to these people That's or right. they're in our family mm-hmm. i'm not suggesting that people get divorces but you need to figure something out here if you truly want to be positive you have to get it's this is why they don't take when somebody's trying to get off of crack they, you got to get a new friend set. You can't go back to the crack house and expect that you're going to stay clean, right? So you've got to surround yourself with 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 positive people by exercising the negativity. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, I share this oftentimes. So I had someone once tell me, you've got five-minute people, five-month people, and five-year people in your life. Don't confuse them. That's right. Okay, so the five-minute people are the, how do you do over the fence when you pull in, pull in your driveway? Um, when you get home at night from work and you have a little bit of interaction, um, but <clears throat> you feel like you got to go take a shower afterwards because they just get creepy <laughs> at some point. You don't invite them to Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So don't confuse, you don't confuse the, those folks. One of the mantras, Dave, that I incorporated into our businesses when the pandemic hit, because everyone was scared and negative and really frightened was this. Offer grace, patience, and forgiveness freely and often. Yeah. This happens to have it has to do with people, right? We have to offer grace, patience, and forgiveness freely and often. Um, and the forgiveness one is an important one because we all make mistakes. If we want to hold those things over people's heads, it's draining, you know? Yeah. But unforgiveness is like a poison, right? There's a yes. Native American saying, that goes something like um, unforgiveness is like drinking a poison and think it's going to hurt someone else, (laughs) (laughs) you know, but we also have to remember that the most important person to forgive, like these people that we're talking about is ourselves. Yeah. A lot of the negativity that we have in our minds, Dave, and I've just learned this from all the therapy I've done over the years is the negativity that I have about myself, Mm. the unforgiveness that I have about myself and things I've done in the past. Right. And we started this whole episode by saying two things suck your joy. Yeah. Comparing yourself to others and living in the past. Yeah. Right. So this is an important one. My only point of all of this is when you're talking about having positive friends, being a positive friend, be a positive friend to yourself. Treat yourself like a firm and loving parent. Yeah. I so agree. That that's people for me. Yeah. And yeah. and then sometimes uh, you know, well not sometimes, but all the time we recommend uh, entrepreneurs to be in some type of a mastermind um, with folks, make sure that you're the person leading it is positive, make sure that the people in it are going to be positive as well. Um, So sometimes also related to that is sometimes we have to almost pay for positive people in our lives. Mentors, therapists. Yes. (laughs) Yes. So if you're serious about this, then yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah and I'm always a big fan. You pay for the best that you can afford at the time. Mm-hmm. Just because you can't get the best in the industry right now doesn't give you an excuse or a reason why not to get somebody right now. I oftentimes use this example. Like third graders look like gods to kindergarten, or fourth graders look like gods to kindergartners. That's right. Right? <laughs> yeah. and there's, an exa- there's a reason why I use this example. But fourth graders look like idiots to seniors in high school. This, this idea came from me from watching my children when they were in kindergarten, when their fourth grade reading buddies would come in and the kids would come home and say, they talk all about their fourth grade reading buddy. Like they can read dad. You know? <laughs> they're so awesome, but they're only a couple of years further down the road than the kindergartners. Right. Mm-hmm. So my point is 
hire professionals as soon as you can afford it. Yeah. You know, they will help expedite your path to positivity for sure. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes, and this is not an endorsement of any one person or any one um, modality, but um, we're not doctors here, but we do know, in fact, we are recording this the day after National Mental, Mental Health Day. Um, sometimes this goes deep, you know, and sometimes we really do need medical professionals to help us sure. shift. And whether it means, you know, psychedelics is the big thing, whether it's ketamine or, you know, ayahuasca or DMT or whatever it is, or there might be more traditional mm -hmm. modes. You've got to do the research. Yeah. But I promise you this, having been on both sides of this, this is an important topic. Positivity, leading the life of positivity and getting attention about your positivity lowers your blood pressure. You find more joy in life. You're more fun to be around. People are attracted to you. I mean, do you want to be around negative people all the time? That's right. <laughs> Right. So, yes, invest in um, uh, professional stuff. But that's not just professional, like outsource people, Dave. Mm -hmm. It's like on our own team for crying out loud. Right. Um, so when you invest in your team, that helps you move the needle. Now, now I'm talking to like business owners. Right. Mm -hmm. um, when you when you have positive people on your team that come in and do great work, um, you get excited. There's the big mo. Oh, my gosh. We had a small victory today, right? That's right. Yeah. Um, and that feels good. Those endorphins kick in, right? Um, and I know that you may not be able to go out and hire a full-time CFO. You know, you may not be able to go out and hire an in-house graphics person. But this is one of the reasons why we started this Hire My VA program to begin with. So that people can get professional, in some cases, world-class help at a fraction of the cost of what it might cost somebody here in the US, right? So um, I think Hire My VA is a good way to help someone invest in their team so that they get some positive momentum going in their business. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And if you if you're hiring the right team that are relatively positive, then there's going to be times when you're going to be like, oh, you're a little bit down, but then they're going to pick you up. And and then sure. and it works both ways because this is related a little bit to one of the previous ones of having positive people around you, having positive team members around you, mm -hmm. but being positive with them. The more the positive that they are, the harder they're going to work, the more they're going to produce, um, and the more fun they're going to have. And in turn, it's going to help you. No question about it. Yeah. Well, it's it's interesting because the reason another reason we started this hire my VA program is so that we personally could be working in our strengths more yeah. and working in those areas that we don't like. That's right. And this is the thing, <laughs> like burnout oftentimes comes from the negativity associated with, darn it, I'm always working in the stuff that I do not like doing. I'm not mm -hmm. good at it, right? We want to feel good about ourselves, right? And you tend to feel better about yourselves when you're doing things that you're good at. And we tend to be good at the things that we're, where our strengths lie. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. So um, I would encourage you to get intentional. We have tons of tools to help you with this uh, in, in our programs to identify your strengths to, um, you know, we have three column exercise. There's a bunch of things to do, but really you need to identify what your strengths are, whether you're taking the Colby A index or the um, Clifton strengths uh, finders, um, but work in your strengths as much as possible. Most studies show that, I mean, studies have shown that most people spend single digits, maybe into the mid teens of their time working in things and their strengths. There's no wonder we're not happy with our lives. Yeah. But imagine if you get closer to like, you know, 60% of your time was spent on things that you're great at. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, different. Or I mean, 80% it's, it's even. So Holy smokes. Right? It's so important. It's so important to stay positive. Um, like one of the things that I do on, you know, I'm working on, I work on, go to church on Saturdays, take that day off and, but work on Sundays. Yeah. One of the nice things about that is it allows me to spend the time, you know, without, um, anybody bothering me. So I work a lot in my strengths on Sundays at the end of the day, I'm like, Oh, this was like the glorious, the bestest <laughs> day ever. <laughs> Cause I'm working in my strengths and doing a right. lot of stuff that is like, uh, that's, that's fun. And of course I'll, I'll, 
blast through a few things that I really do need to get done. But a lot of times I'll work on stuff that I, I really enjoy, For which sure. is in, in, in my strengths. So that's good. Yeah. Um, Larry, we've gone through a whole bunch and I, but I think we've got a whole bunch more. I know I've got some. Well, we do, but and... let me wrap this thing up though on the strengths <laughs> yeah. thing first. Okay. We're talking about intentionality and creating habits earlier, right? Yes. Well, another one of the tools that we offer that you and Melissa tend to lead is that we have these focus calls that we do, mm. every, you know, every people month. People in our I tribe. Would, absolutely. And I would encourage people to take advantage of those focus calls and maybe we can put a link in the show notes or maybe on the screen or something on how to find out information on that. And all it is is we get I should say we, I used to, but you know, tri tribe members get together and in so, an hour of time, the hour or two, I don't even know anymore. It's an hour. It's, it's an, an hour. hour of time. You say, here's what I'm gonna get done in this next hour. Yeah. Dave leads it. He does a few check-ins along the way. How you doing? Here's the time hack. So that you can look back and say, Besides making my bed this morning, which you should be doing every morning, it's a little <laughs> victory. Yeah, I got something done today. Here's something that I can celebrate. I can feel good about this. And again, mm -hmm. a sense of accomplishment happens. The endorphins kick in and it helps you become more of a positive person. Yep. Yep. Those are really important. I love those focus times. We've got yeah. one uh, today, actually. Yeah, in a couple hours. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, I think um, so. We got more. There's going to be a part two on this. My guess is we'll be able to wrap it up in a part two, but who knows, yeah. Larry, with you and me, <laughs> we may come up with a whole bunch more stuff. But what I'm yeah. thinking in my mind, we do like to talk, to Dave. Too. Yeah. Yeah, you do, Larry. Uh, be nice. <laughs> be nice. Oh, I have to offer grace. But, Jason, you know, you like to talk, you. but everything that you say is amazing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, guys, you know, it's a positive, but that's that's true. I wouldn't say if it wasn't true. We cheer each other on. Yes. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. All right, folks. Well, we're going to wrap this up. Look for the part two coming and look for our, um, you know, our download on this. Uh, we'll probably put it at like hiremyva.com slash positive. So grab our checklist there. We'll put a link to it in the in some of the show notes as well. So grab mm -hmm. it there because it'll help you uh, be more positive, of course, only if you take action. Um, but thank you folks for joining us today. And remember, building a team is the way to reclaim your freedom. And we're here to help you with our course and community and our white glove service where we find a rockstar VA for you. So three things we'd love for you to do, and we really appreciate it. Number one, subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already done so, either on your iPhone or your Android phone, and on YouTube by hitting the subscribe button and clicking on the little bell next to it to get reminders. And number two, give us a rating, preferably five-star. Keep it positive, like we mm -hmm. talked about. If, you, if you're positive in your ratings, that's another way that'll help you be positive. <laughs> Add be that honest. to our list. <laughs> um, or leave a comment below the video um, that, that you're watching or any comment because it helps us to get the word out. And then number three is go to hiremyva.com for more information on our course and community and our white glove service. And then get our, we've got all kinds of checklists. We have a checklist so that you can learn what you need to do to properly prepare for hire and thrive with a virtual assistant. But and what's really important is even without you guys having any experience, you'll learn how to do this. You'll learn how to prepare, hire, and thrive with virtual assistants. Um, Larry, we've got people going through our white glove service now. They're ecstatic about what's happening in their lives and in their businesses. Yeah. Um, I just talked to somebody this morning who's considering the service. They're just, they're excited. So we're helping folks and we want to help you guys too. So just go to hiremyva.com for more information. Yeah. Speaking of positivity, uh, do yourself a favor, do the world a favor, go do something significant today. All right. God bless you. God keep you. God hold you until next time. Peace out. Okay. See you. Bye everybody.